but he just does what he wants, mate. Yeah. Fucking Must- joke. Mate, hey, not even that big time. Oh, shut up, Lou. <laughs> he's in big time. Yeah, he's, he's claiming right, he's not big time. I just had to fill this up with water quick. That's why I was late. There you go. <laughs> you changed your top? Can you not breathe? Yeah, I did. No, honestly. <laughs> it's, left, it's left this massive red mark across my stomach. You should have seen me. As soon as we ended this, I ripped off. I was like, <laughs> it's got lure. It's got lure imprinted yeah. on your chest. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. So, am I doing this now, by the way, or should we? I think we might, we might as well get it done now. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> Come on, Turkey. Right. Turkey. <laughs> the, the knockoff beats you got on. <laughs> Uh, don't make me laugh because this could end up. <laughs> Love it. First one of the poddy. First, uh, first oh. wheel spin. It's a shame Louis blew. <laughs> shame Louis blew the wheel. <laughs> Mate, I could have oh, no. done it again. <laughs> don't do it that hard again, Lou. You nearly broke it. <laughs> So um, is it is it my uh, is it my questions now? Yeah. Right. Just got to remember after that beer, I've gone a bit. <laughs> First one this Jan, it's been Greg. Training tomorrow, Joe. Yeah. Oh, you got training. Right. Yeah, yeah we so do. Oh, rubbish. Just three kicks, three kicks for us. Yeah. <laughs> when you have a performance like that against QPR, <laughs> that's it, mate. We'll, be, we'll be getting a rub tomorrow. That's all we do. <laughs> On, oh his, on his belly. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny, let's get it off. <laughs> um, unfortunately, I have the question that um, it's one of them we've got to ask um, because I think for our listeners, you've kind of told us all the highs that you've had as a pro, which have been unbelievable. And I think it's quite an interesting insight to, to hear one of, your, one of your lower moments in football and, and how you dealt with that. Because I always think it's interesting. We always hear about the good stuff that goes on um, as a footballer, and you see it all on Instagram, and you see, you know, pros living the life. But you know, players have come out since and said, you know, behind closed doors, things can get, uh, things can get. I didn't actually need to <laughs> get our little body in there, but um, yeah, just you know, when you when you're at home or when you, when you're on your own, how how you deal with things like that. So have you had low moments in football? And if, and if so, what, what have they been like? And like, kind of tell us all about that. Yeah, I've had a few. Um, when I first moved up there, like I said earlier, the homesickness was a massive thing. Um, and then the standout lowest moment then led on to other low moments. Um, so we were playing a League Cup game against Exeter. Um, and I went to block a clearance and I landed on my knee and tore my meniscus. Um, and at the time, it didn't sound too bad. It was going to be, I was going to be out for six to eight weeks, doing a bit of rehab, then I'd be straight back. Um, that turned into six months, just where it got delayed and delayed and delayed. Um, and we were playing United the week after. This is why that, that stands out as the lowest moment for me in football, because we were playing United in the Cup. The following week, you can see massive fan of United, and they they were playing a they were resting the first team player, so I would have played. Um, yeah. So I was I remember being on the stretcher in tears, just thinking all I could think about was the United game. That's all. Yeah. I didn't even care about the injury. I just cared about the United game. Yeah. Um, called my mum and dad, crying, yeah. saying, "I'm going to miss it." Blah blah. Um, so that's the lowest, like the very lowest moment for me. Um, but that led on to the manager leaving, new managers coming in, finally getting back fit. But then I wasn't getting played. I wasn't involved. Um, and in the end, I had to see a counsellor about depression and about what I could do to deal with that. Um, and to be honest with you, I just I fell out of love. I fell out of love with football completely. Yeah. Um, and that's mainly the reason... I wanted to come home and play local football just so I could feel the love of football again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, footballers definitely go through hard times, especially young footballers, um, yeah. which you don't see, obviously. 
people who say, oh, he's on loads of money, he should be able to deal with anything, blah, blah, but yeah. it's not, yeah. not about money. Yeah, and especially when yeah. the players have got no control over the money they're earning and people use that as fuel to kind of, you know, that's, that, that's their, their main topic, like they're on this money they should be. But to be fair, they don't choose to be on that money. Sometimes they'll argue, yeah, my contract should be bigger and things like that. But at the end of the day, they've worked hard to where they've got to and money's just one of those things. But um, did you get, did you feel like you got the right kind of help and support when you're at home? Did you, or was it difficult to come forward and say that you were, that you were struggling? Um, no, I don't think Hull deal, dealt with it very well at all. Um, obviously, I spoke to, they sorted out someone for me to speak to, which was good of them, but yeah, I didn't really feel like they believed me when I said I was uh, struggling and I, was, I needed help. Like, I don't feel like they done everything they could to help me out. Like, I felt like my contract was running out. Yeah, I felt like they they sent me to someone and that was it. That was their their way of dealing with it. Right, I came back and then it wasn't long before it was the end of the season and I left anyway. Yeah. So no, I, I wouldn't. I, I don't think they dealt with it very well at all. No. Well, I think that's that's a still to this day it's a massive problem. I think it doesn't get taken seriously enough for athletes and especially footballers. Or even if you're not an athlete and you're and you're struggling with with your mental health, so it's definitely something that I think. You know, hopefully as a as a podcast and you as well, Greg, we can kind of focus on that when we get a chance and really make sure that yeah. people can uh, come out and say things because I feel like, you know, still we're uh, still in that kind of struggle. But um, it's good to good to talk about it and good to hear your point of view. So we'll we'll bring the mood back up, um, and we want to hear about your funniest moment in football. I, I, I guarantee there's been so many to choose from. Um, but yeah, your funniest moment in football. Um, you were there, I think, Joe. You were there. Well, I know you were there because you were. <laughs> I won't actually. You know what? I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to say who done it. Uh, Are we going for this one? Are we going for this one? Yeah, I think so. What with 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 the water bottle? Yeah, and the. Um, I don't. The... I, I don't. I don't think I can because if. <laughs> I don't, I don't think we should, we should do this one just yet. This is only the second episode. And I'll tell you what, Greg, Greg, you're going to be back on this podcast, let me tell you, when we're all together. And I think yeah. when we're all together, we can explain that story. I still, even you just mentioning the water bottle and laughing about it, I can't, I can't, I might have to leave. <laughs> we have to. It's the no, one not it's yet. Not, not yet, please. No, we, can, we have to. Look, I, think we need a, I think we need a vote. Beige. We, we want to hear it. Right, we... Can we not yeah, say? I, I, can we not say who it. done it? I no, was just there. I won't drop any names. There's no names. Involved. Okay, no names. Go ahead and don't say the D word. Just use something else. Okay. So we were in a changing room before a game. And don't use the gaffer's name either. No, no, no. Um, All right, go ahead. And I don't know who was in there before. Like I said, <laughs> well, I, w- I won't be able to give you a name, but let's just say there was a female sex toy. <laughs> In the changing room, and obviously, this was at, this was City College, Shuey. Oh wow! I think it should be the year before you got there. Unfortunately, you missed out. Um, Do you know? I think I've heard this story before, but Carrie, I think you've told me this, Joey. It's done the rounds. It has done the rounds. This story. Go on, carry on. It is good. And someone thought it'd be a good idea to uh, to put it in one of the water bowls. Obviously, <laughs> we're we're all in the changing room together, so we know not to drink them. Right, so someone fills them up, um, and bear in mind there's nine, nine water balls in a carrier. What's like one in nine chance you're going to pick the one that's got the uh, the thing in it? Uh, and our manager strolls in, and he uh, picks it up, and he's he tastes it, then he Joe. No, you don't know. <laughs> right, he tastes I think it. he was. I think he was thirsty. Yeah. How did he? How did he how it tasted? What's that? <laughs> How did he explain how it tasted? Well, he he just happened to. I think he was clearing his throat to to kind of give us the uh, give us the the team talk and whatnot. And uh, he just so happened to pick the water bottle that he shouldn't have. And he just he. He's, he said, and he could be right, he might not have picked the right water bottle. He said, uh, oh, this tastes a bit funny. He spat it out straight away, went all over the dressing room. 
and just said, oh, uh, someone's left um, fairy liquid in this one. Fairy liquid, yeah. I don't know if he used the right word there. Yeah, I don't think it was fairy liquid. No. <laughs> but I remember a lot of boys were in on this. And again, we're not mentioning names, but it was the hardest I've like tried not to laugh because yeah. I knew what was happening. Yeah, and I think as well, if I look back now, I think as well, we, we were all eyeing up the water bottle, which it was. And it just so happened that he picked it. And as soon as he picked it, everyone sat up and was like, oh my God, he's going to drink it. He's going to drink it. <laughs> um, but it was, and then as soon as he left, because I think he left and just went out onto the pitch, we were, I was on the floor rolling. It was, it was incredible. But um, I don't know who done it, nor do I know if he picked the right water bottle. But um, <laughs> well, was, I don't know who's done it either. Like, I, I wouldn't be able to tell you. No. And, but, uh, but whoever, whoever done it, I just think, it's not, it's no way to be, cool, right? no way to be, yeah. yeah. Um, and then them, I've, you know when you can't, you, you're trying so hard not to laugh in front of someone. <laughs> yeah. And literally, you're sweating out because you know. <laughs> oh, do you know what so I, do you know what, what we've never mentioned is, thank God he didn't open it. <laughs> I know. Because <laughs> even now I'm thinking about that and I'm getting like. Yeah, it scares me, it scares me. Yeah, it scares me. That if he had opened it, game off. I reckon he would have drove home. Yeah, I think so. I would have drove home. <laughs> um, no, that was a good one. But to whoever done it, there's no place for that in football or in no, a change room. Terrible. Um, I want to know how, how you got hold of that in the first place. Who brought Honestly, the, no, the Honestly, it was there. It was there. It, a, women's, a women's team. Or... It was a women's team. Okay, hold it on, doesn't hold have on, to be a woman. It doesn't have to be a woman. It could have been a men's team. I don't know. But it no, was it just... Was... It... The only reason I'm saying that is because they had the tactics board up before. Yeah. They, they'd left it on the whiteboard before. So is this an away game? No, it was at no. Falmer. Do you know the little huts down the bottom of the car park? Yeah. As in, Do you not yeah, remember? Yeah, yeah. No, and they yeah. were like your change room. So we just went in there literally to throw our kit on. And as you do, you just have a scope and like, oh, the shower's hot. And you obviously, <laughs> someone saw sight of something that shouldn't have been in there or <laughs> something very valuable was left that um, someone should have taken time <laughs> with them. The valuables bag. They've left they it. didn't put it in the, yeah, the values <laughs> bag. Yeah. And it was left. So hopefully that person got it back because uh, it was a whopper. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah and then it was one of them I think everyone everyone had a look at it it was getting thrown around um, I think someone had a selfie with it there was a lot of things going that, on and then this makes it sound like we were in about year 8 we were in college yeah this is college and we had I think we were playing our biggest rivals which was Worthing like yeah. it was a big big game but uh, there's nothing like a bit of you know coming together over over that uh, well, uh, you're, wrong choice of word. But um, just, so, just so the listeners yeah. get a bit more of an idea, if we're talking shoe size, what are we talking? <laughs> Let's not talk about shoe size. Let's talk about a type of bread, and I'd go baguette. <laughs> I'd go baguette. It was an absolute whopper. No wonder they left it behind. I'll be honest. With you. <laughs> um, it, it was uh, big enough to go into a big old water bowl. Put it that way. Yeah, they weren't big as well. Big water bowls. Big water bottles they were, um, <laughs> but yeah, that was that was very funny. Um, but we've got other ones. We had um, this is one with me and Greg. Did you work with Kuipers at City? Shuey? Uh No, I don't think so. No, he left. No. He, he left. Uh, uh, he left with Chippy, I think. Oh, uh, we don't worry him. about it then. Yeah, it wasn't that funny. I thought you were there, um, Shuey, with Kuipers, but. Um, but no, Shuey, is there any funny stories you remember with 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 me and Greg? Because we obviously you came you came and joined us at City College for a year. Yeah, I think we took you on one of your first nights out, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was actually it was the first night out. I think I was only, I was I was uh, Louis' age. Oh, How old you? Sixteen. Sixteen. So I was sixteen. Me and Piercy come out with you boys after um, it was presentation. Night, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we come out. Um, and obviously we were only 16. Pierce, you looked older anyway, but I've, I've probably looked, yeah, I look quite young and I still do. Um, and yeah, and it, we couldn't obviously go to the pubs or, or clubs and that. So we ended up in, in Pavilion Gardens 
Yeah, we um, went yeah. and done. We went and got a load of beers, didn't we? Thing from, is, though, as a Sainsbury's. It was it was your boys last year, wasn't it? So it was it was made better because it was your almost leaving, dude. Do you know what I mean? You boys weren't yeah. coming back the following year, and that was pretty much the whole football squad. So it was only me and Pierce and a few others really. And a few um, of the second team boys were there as well, weren't they? Like yeah, they, and they were more there. than welcome. Yeah, <laughs> and then obviously we had star of the show, uh, Jack McLean. Well, Jack McLean. Oh, <laughs> what a legend. What a voice, by the way. So we start. Is it, is it possible? Is it possible to ever get that onto the podcast so people can. Maybe when yeah. we're all together and we're all sitting around a table and Greg's back with us, we'll, we'll tell the listeners about that and we'll show them. Yeah. Well, or I could, I could post a little teaser already because I know I could. I think I've got the video. Okay. Too. Okay. Um, so he, Jack McLean video. Yeah. But I remember he started the night. I don't know if you remember this. He started the night doing front flips. Do you remember? Yeah, he did. He did. <laughs> he did. <laughs> you boys are like... But the thing is, what happened is like there was a panel. So we were doing X Factor or some shit like that. Yeah. And it was, I think, TJ, you boys and Oscar, I think, were like the panel. Um, yeah. Judges. And then you were like, right, Jack, if you want to make it to judges' houses, you've got to do a front flip. But that was all for him to get beers, wasn't it? If he wanted a beer. Yeah. yeah. Him and his, his seven-up jumper. <laughs> oh, Lady killer. That's what he was. He was. But, um, you but... weird thing is, he didn't, he, I'd never heard him speak before that night. <laughs> yeah. He was saving his, his voice for that night. He knew. He knew that was coming. <laughs> that was his calling that night. He had a, he had a polo on, seven-up jumper. Front flip, back flips, and he, he just unleashed. Smart, he? he did look the part. He really did. Oh, <laughs> bless him. Unreal. Made the night, though, didn't he? Yeah, that, do you know what? And we still talk about that night, me and Piercy, yeah. to this day. I think yeah. that kicked us off. We were just, like, we were Beige's age. And it was like, we're young lads. I think the night for us two carried on a little bit. Piercy yeah. didn't really know where, where we lived to get the bus home. So he took me back to college. <laughs> and uh, like what I lived in Salt Dean at the time, so from, from Wilson Avenue to, to Salt Dean is quite a way. And uh, he was dragging me up this hill, and uh, I was steaming to be fair. And he got halfway up Wilson Avenue, and he went, oh, I need a piss, wait there. And uh, he was dragging me up, and he let go of me. And I kid you not, I must have rolled to the bottom because I remember my mum picking <laughs> me up at the fire station. <laughs> and it was, uh, but it kicked it off for us, I think. Me and Piercy tried to, to give the, the lads that come in the following year a similar sort of thing, and it, it wasn't quite the case. But you boys, yeah, you definitely you kicked it off for us um, at a young age. So you're bad influence, mate. Yeah, it's good I to like. say we eased you in a little bit then. You did. Yeah. But I think that the, the bad thing is right now is that we're bringing Marv around beige. And it, do you know what I mean? It, it didn't. It, it served me well. I'm better now. I'm more well behaved now. Beige is a, a beige is even worse. He'll, do you know what I mean? He'll be the Jack McLean. So I no, think no. having, <laughs> having no, it around. I don't know about that. There's only one Jack McLean. There is. He's better looking than beige as well. So we'll move on. <laughs> so our final question uh, was: What does the future hold for Greg Lua? That's a good question. Um, I don't really know. I tend not to think about it too much. I think now where I'm enjoying my football, and we obviously had that time where I didn't enjoy my football, I don't want to put too much pressure on myself to to think about that. Like I yeah. just want to kind of enjoy the moment and, and just see where it takes me, really. And I think as well, you know, when all said and done, and you get to that day where you do hang your boots up, you can look back and say, you signed that professional contract, you played as a pro, you scored as a pro. And, you know, that's, that's, that's every, every young footballer's dream. So to say that you've done that, um, mm -hmm. not saying that your career is over, far from it, because, you know, you never know what the future holds, especially in football. But I think, um, especially for someone in the area that we all, we all know, you know, you're one of the, the boys that very few make it. So I think you've... Uh, yeah, you've you've had an amazing career as well, I think, um, and you've still got a lot more to give to the game. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I'm proud. Like my mum and dad say it was me all the time. They're they're obviously so proud of what I've done, and yeah, like no one can take that away from me. Like I have done what I've done. Exactly, exactly. That's always going to be there. Um, yeah, and regardless of what happens, and or if that's the furthest I ever go, I'm I'm proud of what I've done. Not many people yeah. can say they've done it. Definitely. Yeah, 100%.
Agree. Love it. Well, wow. look, boys, that um, that brings us to to an end of our podcast. Um, I think every week uh, we will get beige to down some form of concoction. We were talking about it before, weren't we, Joey? Um, yeah, I didn't see it tonight, but I don't think he's done it yet. And I think, especially because no. he's worn that bling again, old Brady. Yeah, he's definitely got to do something. <laughs> so I think, Lou, what do you want? Oh, I got rum or vodka. <laughs> do anything. Do anything. Both. I think yeah. both. Both, yeah. Hurry up. Wait, have you got it with you now, Beige? Just to end the show? Yeah, the oh, vodka's yes. in a water bottle. The vodka's in a water bottle. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Okay. And where's the... And where's the look at that. He's an absolute <laughs> true professional. So I think pour, me. pour some rum. <laughs> pour me, some rum in the bottle. Bit of um, I've, brought, I've brought a glass. Oh, he's got... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Hell. Go ahead, Beige. To think, end the show. So what, yeah. what am I doing then? Let's be in there as well. All of it. All of everything, it for Greg. Everything I see on the screen. All of it. Yeah. Yeah. All your beer as well. Oh, this is gonna end in. No, I won't be able to down it. I'll just throw up. All right, just do as much as you can. <laughs> that water bottle. So such a <laughs> can't believe it, mate. That's vodka. <laughs> <laughs> in a bottle. <laughs> that white spirit. Well, have you never done that? We've never put vodka in a bottle. No, sorry. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a professional player here, Lou. <laughs> He drinks our bucks to water bottles. <laughs> He's in the club. Sorry, Greg. He's in the club oh. in Buxton like this with a sparkle. Everyone's like, Lou, do you want a drink? And he just opened his coat pocket. He's like, no, I'm all right, mate. Got the old Buxton. Go on then, Lou. Love it, babe. What, am I down yet? Yeah, come on, mate. Come on, Brady, man. <laughs> oh, thirsty, isn't he? Unreal. Love it, beige. <laughs> Love it, you. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, <laughs> to be fair, you've done well there in one. Yeah, yeah, yes, to be fair. Right, now Wait, can back. I just say, absolute pleasure to have uh, yeah. uh, Mr. Greg Lua. And hopefully, when times have changed, we'll get you on properly mm. and we'll all be, and all be together. But um, cheers. Yeah, boys. Cheers. It's cheers. been a pleasure. Very enjoyable. Nice one. Love it, boys. Listen, have a good weekend. I'll see you boys on Sunday for work anyway. Um, and yeah, it's been a pleasure, lads. Thanks, Greg. I've enjoyed it, boys. Thank you. Love, Love it, it, Greg. Appreciate see that. you soon. Take Later care, boys. boys. Bye. Bye.